Hello and welcome back to the reading of the Holy Bible. Today we will be continuing with Judges, chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8. Chapter 5, Triumphal Song of Deborah and Barak. In that day Deborah and Barak, son of Abinomim, sung and said, O you of Israel, that have willingly offered your lives to danger, bless the Lord. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, ye princes. It is I, it is I that will sing to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, the God of Israel. Prayer of the Lord. O Lord, when thou went out of Seir and passed by the regions of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped water. The mountains melted before the face of the Lord, and Sinai before the face of the Lord, the God of Israel. The weakness of Israel in the days of Samgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jehel, the paths rested, and they that went by them walked through byways. Chapter 5, verse 6, Clarification. The paths rested. The ways to the sanctuary of God were unfrequented, and men walked in the byways of error and sin. Verse 7. Resuming with verse 7. The valiant men ceased and rested in Israel under Deborah, until Deborah arose. A mother arose in Israel. The Lord chose new wars, and he himself threw the gates of the enemies. A shield and spear was not seen among forty thousand of Israel. My heart loveth the princes of Israel. O you that of your own good will offered yourselves to danger, bless the Lord, speak you that ride upon fair asses, and you that sit in judgment, and walk in the way, where the chariots were dashed together, and the army of the enemies were choked. There let the justices of the Lord be rehearsed, and his clemency towards the brave men of Israel. Then the people of the Lord went down to the gates, and obtained the sovereignty. The call to battle, Arise, arise, O Deborah! Arise, arise, and utter a canticle. Arise, Barak, and take hold of thy captives. O son of Abinoam, the remnants of the people are saved. The Lord hath fought among the valiant ones. Out of Ephraim he destroyed them into Amalek, and after them, and after him out of Benjamin into the people O Amalek. Out of Makur there came down princes, and out of Zebulun they that led the army to fight. Verse 14, Clarification. Out of Ephraim. The enemy staggering, pardon me. The enemy straggling in their fight, pardon me. The enemy straggling in their flight were destroyed as they were running through the land of Ephraim and of Benjamin, which lies beyond Ephraim, and so on to the very confines of Amalek. This may allude to former victories of the people of God, particularly that which was freshest in memory when the men of Ephraim and Benjamin, with Awad at their hand, overthrew their enemies, the Moabites, with the Amalekites. Their allies, see chapter 3, Makur, the tribe of Manasseh, whose eldest son was Makur. Resuming with verse 15. The captains of Issachar were with Deborah, and followed the steps of Barak, who has exposed himself to danger, as one, being, as one going headlong and into a pit. Reuben being divided against himself, there was found a strife of courageous men. Verse 15, clarification. Divided against himself, an example. By this it seems that the valiant men of the tribe of Reuben were divided in their sentiments with relation to the war to this war. This division kept them at home within their own borders to hear this to hear the bleeding of their flocks. Resuming with verse sixteen Why dwellest thou between two borders that thou mayest hear the bleedings of the flocks? Reuben being divided against himself, there was found a strife of courageous men. Galad rested beyond the Jordan, and Dan applied himself to ships. Acer dwelt on the sea of shore and abode in the heavens. But Zabulon and Nephtali offered their lives to death in the region of Merom. The battle. Okay. The kings came and fought the kings of Chanan. Let's resume. Let's. Yes. The battle. The kings came and fought. The kings of Chanan fought in Thanak, by the waters of Magado, and yet they took no spoils. War from heaven was made against them. The stars remained in their order, and curses fought against Sisara. The torrent of Sisan dragged their carcasses. The torment of Cadaman. The torrent of Sisan tread thou, my soul, upon the strong ones. The hoofs of the horses were broken, whilst the stoutest of the enemies fled amain, and fell headlong down. Miraz cursed, Jahal blessed, blessed pardon me. Curse ye the land of Miraz, and the angel of the Lord curse the and the angel pardon me. Curse ye the land of Miraz, said the angel of the Lord. 
Curse the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to help his most valiant man. <coughs> Verse 23, Clarification. Miraz, where this land of Miraz was, which is here laid under a curse, we cannot find, nor is there mention of it anywhere else in Holy Writ. Resuming with verse 24. Blessed among women be Jehel, the wife of Heber the Sinite, and blessed be she in her tent. He asked her water, and she gave him milk, and offered him butter and a dish fit for princes. She put her left hand to the nail, and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And she struck Sisara, seeking in his ha head a place for the wound, and strongly piercing through his temples. At her feet he fell. He fainted and he died. He rolled before her feet, and he lay lifeless and wretched. Sorrow of Sisara's mother. His mother looked out at a his mother looked out at a window and howled. She spoke from the dining room. Why is his chariot so long in coming back? Why are the feet of his horses so slow? One that was wiser than the rest of his wives returned the answer to her mother-in-law. Perhaps he is now dividing the spoils, and the fairest of the women is chosen out for him. Garments of divers col divers colors are given to Sisara for his prey, and furniture of different kinds is heaped together to adorn their necks. Epilogue. So let all thy enemies perish, O Lord. But let them that love thee shine, and the sun shineth in his rising, and the land rested for forty years. Chapter 6. Madianites oppress Israel. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, and he delivered them into the hand of Madian seven years. And they were grievously oppressed by them, and they made themselves dens and caves in the mountains, and strongholds to resist. And when Israel had sown, Madian and Amalek, and the rest of the eastern nations came up, and pitching their tents among them, wasted all things as they were in the blade, even to the entrance of Gaza. They left nothing at all in Israel, for sustenance of life, nor sheep, nor oxen, nor asses. For they and all their flocks came with their tents, and like locusts filled all places in an innumerable multitude of men, and of camels, wasting whatsoever they touched. And Israel was humbled exceedingly in the sight of Madian. Oppression is punishment for sins. And he cried to the Lord, desiring help against the Madianites. And he sent unto them a prophet, and he spoke, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I made you to come up out of, the, out of Egypt, and brought you out of the house of bondage, and delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians, and of all the enemies that afflicted you. And I cast them out of your coming in, and gave you their lead. And I said, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, and you would not hear my voice. Gideon is called to save Israel. And an angel of the Lord came, and sat under an oak that was in Ephrath, and belonged to Joas, the father of the family of Ezri. And when Gideon, his son, was threshing and cleansing, weep by the winepress, to flee from Madian, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, and said, The Lord is with thee, O most valiant of men. And Gideon said to him, I beseech thee, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why have these evils fallen upon us? Where are his miracles which our fathers have told us of, saying, The Lord brought us out of Egypt, but now the Lord hath forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of Madian. And the Lord, and the Lord looked upon him, and said, Go in this thy strength, and thou shalt deliver Israel out of the hand of Madian. Know that I have sent thee. He answered and said, I beseech thee, my Lord, wherewith shall I deliver Israel? Behold, my family is the meanest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Verse 15, Clarification. The meanest in Manasseh. Mark how the Lord chooses the humble, who are mean and little in their own eyes, for the greatest enterprise. Resuming with verse 16. The Lord said to him, I will be with thee, and thou shalt cut off Madian as one man. And he said, If I have found grace before thee, give me a sign that it is thou that speakest to me, and depart not hence till I return to thee, and bring a sacrifice and offer it to thee. And he answered, I will wait thy coming. Gideon's gift is consumed by fire. So Gideon went in and boiled a kid, and made eleven loaves of a measure of flour, and putting the flesh in a basket, and the broth of the flesh into a pot, he car carried, pardon me, he carried all under the oak, and presented to him. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Take the flesh of the unleavened loaves, and lay them upon that rock, and pour out the broth thereon. When he had done so, the angel of the Lord put forth the tip of the rod, which he held in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened loaves. And there arose a fire from the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened loaves. And the angel of the Lord vanished out of his sight. And Gideon, seeing that it was the angel of the Lord, said, Alas, my Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said to him, Peace be with thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Gideon destroys an altar of Baal. And Gideon built there an altar to the Lord, and called it the Lord's peace, until this present day. And when he was yet in Ephra, which is of the family of Ezri, that night the Lord said to him, 
Take a bullock of thy father's, and another bullock of seven years, and thou shalt destroy the altar of Baal, which is thy father's, and cut down the grove that is about the altar. And thou shalt build an altar to the Lord thy God in the top of this rock, whereupon thou didst lay the sacrifice before. And thou shalt take the second bullock, and shalt offer a holocaust upon a pile of the wood, which thou shalt cut down out of the grove. Then Gideon, taking ten men of his servants, did as the Lord had commanded him. But fearing his father's house and the men of that city, he would not do it by day, but did it by night. Followers of Baal seek Gideon's life. And when the men of that town were risen in the morning, they saw the altar of Baal destroyed, and the grove cut down, and the second bullock laid upon the altar, which then was built. And they said one to another, Who hath done this? And when they inquired for the author of the fact, it was said, Gideon, the son of Joas, did all this. And they said to Joas, Bring out thy son hither, that he may die, because he hath destroyed the altar of Baal, and hath cut down his grove. He answered them, Excuse me. Are you the adventures of Baal that you fight for him? He that is his adversary, let him die before tomorrow light appear. If he be a god, let him revenge himself on him that hath cast down his altar. From that day Gideon was called Jerobaal, because Joas had said, Let Baal revenge himself on him that hath cast down his altar. Gideon assembles the people. Now all Madian and Amalek and the eastern people were gathered together, and passing over the Jordan, camped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he sounded the trumpet, and called together the house of Abiezer to follow him. And he sent messengers into all Manasseh, and they also followed him, and other messengers into Aser, and Zabulon, and Naphtali. And they came to meet him. God signed to Gideon. And Gideon said to God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, I will put this fleece of wool on the floor. If there be dew on the fleece only, and it be dry on all the ground beside, I shall know that by my hand, as thou hast said, thou wilt deliver Israel. And it was so. And rising before day, wringing the fleece, he filled a vessel with the dew. And he said again to God, Let not thy wrath be kindled against me if I try once more, seeking a sign in the fleece. I pray that the fleece only may be dry, and all the ground wet with dew. And God did that night as he had requested, and it was dry on the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Whew, pardon me. Chapter 7. Gideon picks 300 men. Then Jerobal, who was the same as Gideon, rising up early, and all the people with him, came to the fountain that is called Harad. Now the camp of Madian was in the valley on the north side of the high hill. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people that are with thee are many, and Madian shall not be delivered into their hands, lest Israel should glory against me, and say, I was delivered by my own strength. Chapter 7, verse 2, Clarification. Lest Israel. By this way we see that God will not choose for his instruments in great achievements, which depend purely on his grace. Those who, through pride and self-conceit, will take the glory to themselves. Resuming with verse 3. Speak to the people and proclaim in the hearing of all. Whosoever is fearful and timorous, let him return. So two and twenty thousand men went away from Mount Galad and returned home, and only ten thousand remained. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them to the waters, and there I will try them. And of whom I shall say to thee, This shall go with thee. Let him go, whom I shall forbid to go. Let him return. And when the people are come down to the waters, the Lord said to Gideon, They that shall lap the water with their tongues, as dogs are wont to laugh, thou shalt set apart by themselves. But they that shall drink bowing down their knees shall be on the other side. And the number of them that had lapsed water, casting it with the hand to their mouth, was three hundred men, and all the rest of the multitude had drunk kneeling. And the Lord said to Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped water, I will save you and deliver Madian into thy hand. But let all the rest of the people return to their place. So taking victuals and trumpets, according to their number, he ordered all the rest of the multitude to depart to their tents. And he, with the three hundred, gave himself to the battle. Now the camp of Madian was beneath him in the valley. Verse 7 Clarification That lapped water. These were preferred that took the water up in their hands and so lapped it over those who laid themselves down to the waters to drink, which argued a more eager and sensual disposition. Resuming with verse 9 Gideon eavesdrops in the enemy camp. That the same night the Lord said to him, Arise and go down into the camp because I have delivered them into thy hand. But if thou be afraid to go alone, let Pharaoh thy servant go down with thee. And when thou shalt hear what they are saying, then shall thy hands be strengthened, and thou shalt go down more secure to the enemy's 
camp. And he went down with Pharaoh, his servant, into the part of the camp, where was the watch of men in arms. But Madian and Amalek and all the eastern people lay scattered in the valley, as a multitude of locusts. Their camels also were innumerable as the sand that lieth on the seashore. And when Gideon was come, once told his neighbor a dream, and in this manner related what he had seen. I dreamt a dream, and it seemed to me as if a hearth cake of barley bread rolled and came down into the camp of Madian. And when it was come to a tent, it, sh it struck it, and beat it down flat to the ground. Verse 13, Clarification, A Dream Believing in dreams is commonly superstitious, and as such is condemned in the word of God. But in some extraordinary cases, as we here see, God is pleased by dreams, to foretell what he is about to do. Resuming with verse 14. He to whom he spoke answered, This is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joas, a man of Israel. For the Lord hath delivered Madian and all their camp into his hand. Gideon's strategy. And when Gideon had heard the dream, and the interpretation thereof, he adored and returned to the camp of Israel, and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered the camp of Madian into our hands. And he divided the three hundred men into three parts, and gave them trumpets in their hands, and empty pitchers, and lamps within the pitchers. And he said to them, What you shall see me do, do you the same. I will go into one part of the camp, and do you as I shall do. When the trumpet shall sound in my hand, do you also bow, blow the trumpets on every side to the camp, and shout together to the Lord and to Gideon. Gideon defeats the Madianites, and Gideon and the three hundred men that were with him went into the part of the camp at the beginning of the midnight watch. And the watchmen, being alarmed, they began to sound their trumpets and to clap the pitchers one against another. Verse 19, Clarification, Their Trumpets. In mystical sense, the preachers of the gospel to conquer must not only sound with the trumpet of the word of God, but must also break their eastern, their earthen pitchers by the mortification of the flesh and its passions, and carry lamps in their hands by the light of their virtues. Mm. Resuming with verse 20. And when they sounded their trumpets in three places round about the camp, and had broken their pitchers, they had their lamps in their left hands, and they with their right hands, the trumpets which they blew, and they cried out, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon, standing every man in his place round about the enemy's camp. So all the camp was troubled, and crying out and howling, they fled away. And the three hundred men nevertheless persisted, sounding the trumpets, and the Lord sent the sword into all the camp, and they killed one another. Fleeing as far as Bethsaida, and the border of abel Mohala and Tebeth. But the men of Israel, shouting from Nephtali and Aser, and from all Manasseh, pursued after Madian. Oreb and Zeb are slain, and Gideon sent messengers into all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down to meet Madian, and take the waters before them to beth Bera and the Jordan. And all Ephraim shouted, and took the waters before them, and the Jordan as far as beth Bera. And having taken two men of Madian, Oreb and Zeb, Oreb they slew in the rock of Oreb, and Zeb in the winepress of Zeb, and they pursued Madian, carrying the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon beyond the waters of the Jordan. Verse 25, Clarification. Two men, an example, two of their chiefs are most important men. Chapter 8. Gideon appeases the Ephraimites. And the men of Ephraim said to him, What is this that thou meanest to do, that thou wouldst call us when thou went, when thou wentst to fight against Madian? And they chided him sharply, and almost offered violence. And he answered them, What could I have done like to that which you have done? Is not one bunch of grapes of Ephraim better than the vintages of Ebiazar? Verse 2, Clarification. What could I? A meek and humble answer appeased them, who otherwise might have gone to extremes. So great is the power of humility, both with God and man. Resuming with verse 3. The Lord hath delivered into your hands the princes of Madian, Oreb and Zeb. What could I have done like to what you have done? And when he had said this, their spirit was appeased, in which they swelled against, with which they swelled against him. Socketh and Phanuel to help Gideon. And when Gideon was come to the Jordan, he passed over with three hundred men that were with him, who were so weary that they could not pursue after them that fled. And he said to the man, men of Sakath, Give, I beseech you, bread to the people that is with me, for they are faint, that we may pursue Zebi and Salmana, the kings of Madian. The princes of Sakath answered, Per adventures, the, palm, the palms of the hands of Zebi and Salmana are in thy hand, and therefore thou demandest that we should give bread to the army. To thy army. And he said to them, When the Lord therefore shall have delivered Zebi and Salmana into my hands, I will thrust your flesh 
with the thorns and briars of the desert. And going up from thence, he came to Phanuel, and he spoke the like things to the men of that place. And they also answered him, as the men of Sokoth had answered. He said therefore to them also, When I shall return a conqueror in peace, I will destroy this tower. Gideon captured Zabi and Salmana. But Zabi and Salmana were resting with all their army. For fifteen thousand men were left of all the troops of the eastern people, and one hundred and twenty thousand warriors that drew up the sword were slain. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in tents, on the east of Nob in Jegba, and smote the camp of the enemies who were secure, and suspected no hurt. And Zabi and Salmana fled, and Gideon pursued and took them, all their host being put in confusion. Gideon punishes Sakoth and Thanuel. And returning from the battle before the sun rising, he took a boy of the men of Sokoth, and he asked him the names of the princes and ancients of Sokoth. And he described unto him seventy-seven men. And he came to Sokoth and said to them, Behold, Zabi and Salmana, concerning whom you upbraided me, saying, Peradventure, the hands of Zabi and Salmana are in thy hands, and therefore thou demandest that we should give bread to the men that are weary and faint. So he took the ancients of the city, and thorns and briars of the desert, and tore them with the same, and cut in pieces the men of Sokoth. And he demolished the tower of Phanuel, and he slew the men of the city. Gideon slays Zebi and Salmana. And he said to Zebi and Salmana, What manner of men were they whom you slew in Thabor? They answered, They were like thee, and one of them as the son of a king. He answered them, They were my brethren, the sons of my mother. As the Lord liveth, if you had saved them, I would not kill you. And he said to Jethur, his eldest son, Arise and slay them. But he drew not his sword, for he was afraid, being but yet a boy. And Zippy and Salmana said, Do there rise and run upon us, because the strength of a man is according to his age. Gideon rose up and slew Zippy and Salmana, and he took the ornaments and bosses with which the necks of the camels of kings are wont to be adorned. Gideon refuses to be king. And all the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule thou over us, and thy son, and thy son's son, because thou hast delivered us from the hand of Madian. He said to them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you, but the Lord shall rule over you. Gideon makes an ephod, and he said to them, I desire one request of you. Give me the earlets of your spoils, for, my, for the Ishmaelites were accustomed to wear golden earlets. They answered, We will give them most willingly, and spreading a mantle on the ground, they cast upon it the earlets of the spoils. And the weight of the earlets that he requested was a thousand seven hundred sickles of gold, besides the ornaments and jewels and purple raiment, which the kings of Madian were wont to use, and besides the golden chains that were about the camel's necks. And Gideon made an ephod thereof, and, he, and put it in his city, Ephra. And all Israel committed fornication with it, and became a ruin to Gideon and all his house. Verse 27, Clarification, in Ephod. A priestly garment which Gideon made with a good design, but the Israelites, after his death, abused it by making an instrument of their adulterous worship. Resuming with verse 28. But Madian was humbled before the children of Israel. Neither could they any more lift up their heads, but the land rested for forty years, while Gideon presided. Gideon's posterity and death. So Jerobel, the son of Joas, went and dwelt in his own house. And he had seventy sons, who came out of his thigh, for he had many wives, and his... And his concubine that he had in Shechem bore him a son, whose name was Abimelech. And Gideon, the son of Joas, died in a good old age. Before we get to that, actually, verse 31, clarification. His concubine. She was the servant, but not his harlot, and is called his concubine, his wives of an inferior degree, are commonly called in the Old Testament, though otherwise lawfully married. Resuming with verse 32. And Gideon, the son of Joas, died in a good old age, and was... Whew. Buried in the sepulchre of his father in Ephra of the family of Ezri, the Israelites turned to idolatry. But after Gideon was dead, the children of Israel turned again and committed a fornication with Balaam. And they made a covenant with Baal that he should be their God. And they remembered not the Lord their God, who delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies round about. Neither did they show mercy to the house of Jeroboam, Gideon, according to all the good things he had done to Israel. That was chapter, Judges chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8. Join us next week as we resume with Judges chapters 9, 10, 11, and 12. Thank you very much for joining as always. I hope that you all happen to have a wonderful week. And God bless.